Hi and welcome to a new in the mail segment. As you can see I have a bunch of items received and I don't think I can fit all of them in a single episode without making it too long. So probably the best thing to do is to split these items over two episodes. So let's get started. This one is local or to say more precisely it's coming from uh, Europe. It is an order I placed with RS components. So let's see what I got in here. Now this is a first, I've never seen electronic components delivered in paper bags. These are dual logarithmic potentiometers from Alps. There's nothing special about them except the uh, vertical mounting and the shaft length. I needed these specifically for my uh, Logitech sound system which uh, started making some cracking noises while adjusting the volume. So the only place where I could find these stocked was uh, on RS components because otherwise I don't usually order parts from them because they're a bit more expensive than the other suppliers. And in this other package I have uh, a Cortex-M3 microcontroller from ST, it is the STM32 series and uh, I got this to replace a damaged processor on uh, a flight controller board. So you'll probably um, see me in another video replacing that processor. For this next item I pretty much know what's going to be inside because of the size of the package. These are uh, 50 centimeters LED strips. So let's open this package. Just as a note, you can probably see here on this side uh, the package arrived uh, in quite a bad shape. And there is probably some damage done to the LED strips inside. But let's open this and check for ourselves. So yeah, just as I suspected, I can see that four of the strips are bent on this end. And I don't really understand why they didn't stack them all on top of each other instead of leaving these four protruding out of this uh, side. If all of them would have been stacked on top of each other, it would have made a more rigid uh, assembly. But anyway, I will uh, contact the seller about this, tell him how the package arrived. In here I have 10 pieces, uh, 50 centimeters each, 36 LEDs on each strip. The LEDs are a cool white 7020 and the strip itself is one of those aluminum based substrates for better heat dissipation. I plan on using this for lighting right here in my small lab. I will probably have to scrap this uh, portion of these four strips because even after straightening they won't sit flat on a heat sink anymore and the solder joints on these LEDs will probably crack and become useless. And let me show you what I mean. Right here we can see that the LEDs which are closest to the bend point will have suffered uh, some mechanical stress on the solder joints and on the LED die itself and I believe those uh, solder joints will have a very short life so I'm not going to be using this part of the strip there are a bunch of manufacturers producing LEDs in this size but for this price $11 shipped you can bet these ones coming from eBay are not the best in terms of quality and efficacy but they should do the job at least for a while and they are great for evaluating something at low cost and you can later switch on to something of higher quality. Let's just do a quick test on one of these strips to see how much current it draws at its nominal 12 volt supply voltage. 
I have my go for power supply set for 12 volts and uh, limiting at 2 amps. I have one of the strips connected, so let's turn the power supply on. I can't even see the display on the power supply due to the brightness of these LEDs. So it is drawing 1.2 amps at 12 volts. 1.2 amps divided by 36 LEDs on a single strip means about 33.3 milliamps for each LED. During the process I noticed something strange about these LEDs and let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna have to zoom in on one of the LEDs. As you can see in this macro shot of a 7020 packaged LED it appears to be lighting only from one side of the rectangle shape. I'm not sure if this is normal. Um, I haven't had any other uh, LEDs in this format before. So if you have any info on these LEDs, please uh, leave it in the comment section below. These are actually quite bright, even though they only light from one side of the chip. I plan on attaching these to an aluminum rail that will act as a heatsink and will further keep them cool. And of course they will be dimmable probably through a remote, but all that in a separate video. Next up let's open this envelope. And here we have an assortment of end cap crimps. These are usually used for creating something like a common ground point using wires or basically just securing any two wires together. I have no specific use for these right now but just good general items to have in your toolbox or in your connectors assortment kit. Another small envelope. These are a bunch of female spade connectors. I got 20 uh, in red and 20 in blue. Once again, no particular use for this, but good to keep in the lab or in the spade connectors kit. At some point, I might need these to connect to a lead acid battery or some kind of equipment. So a good idea to keep them around. These were under $3 shipped. You probably know what this is, it's quite popular on eBay with hundreds if not thousands of listings for this item. It's a wireless dimmer, usually used for LED strips. I plan on using it for the LED strips shown earlier. The dimmer itself is quite small as you can see and I suspect it using a MOSFET with PWM for controlling the output voltage. They say 5 to 24 volts input with a 12 amps peak current output but that's hard to achieve in such a small package. I will have to do some testing and see how well it behaves with half of that at 6 amps. I also wonder if you can re use two of these and have them paired to the same remote. That would be useful because it will allow me to split the load across two or three of these uh, dimmers. Let's just do a quick test by connecting this uh, dimmer to one of the LED strips I showed earlier. This is interesting. In the small user manual that came with the LED dimmer it says the peak output current is 6 amps. Please reduce load if main unit is overheating. So there seems to be a misunderstanding between the 
product description page on eBay and the actual user manual that comes with the module. So uh, 6 amps peak output seems a lot more reasonable getting out from something of this size as opposed to the claimed 12 amps in the uh, product description on eBay. So yeah, 6 amps peak seems reasonable and of course you would want to run that at something lower than 6 amps for safe operation. So hooking this up should be quite easy. We have the voltage input on this side. the output for the LED strip on this other side. And I think I'm going to use my soldering iron to quickly solder these two together. So now I'm going to turn my power supply on. And the LEDs seem to be blinking. I'm not sure if this is some kind of program. I'm going to pull the plastic security from the battery. And let's try the on off button. Okay turn them off. Pressing it again, it did turn on the LEDs with this weird flashing pattern. Let's try the mode buttons. Yeah, so it seems we have all these uh, modes. Think this is simple on off mode and let's try the brightness buttons which are up here 25% 50% 100% and then we can use single steps I'm not sure but it could have 256 steps. I did saw something about that specified in the user manual. What's this green button do? Apparently nothing. I'm mainly going to use this on off mode. And maybe the uh, brightness setting. No noticeable heating on the dimmer itself from this single LED strip. But once again this is only drawing about 1.2 amps. I also wonder if you can use two of these and have them paired to the same remote. That would be useful to split the load across two or three dimmers. So it appears this dimmer plus remote kit works ok and it was only $2.30 shipped. That includes the remote control which is quite a remarkable price if you ask me. Of course they are low quality and the plastic on this remote screams low quality but it works and I don't need something that's of higher quality for just simple LED lighting here in my lab in here we have a maple mini clone let me open this and show you a close-up of this board. This is based on the STM32 ARM Cortex-M3. The original is manufactured by Leaf Labs and it was sold through some distributors like SparkFun. However, as of spring 2015, the Maple line was discontinued. And I say line because this wasn't the only product. This was like their mini or nano version of the normal maple, which is the size of roughly an Arduino. They discontinued these products. Right now, all you can get are these clones from eBay. This was supposed to be programmable through an Arduino-like interface, and it had the advantage of the M3 72MHz ARM microcontroller, so you could do all sorts of interesting but computationally intensive tasks. I wanted to have one in my lab in case I ever decide to play with 
its processing based IDE or if not I can just use it as a cheap STM32 development module because it only costs four dollars and thirty cents so this will go into my uh, development boards box yet another small envelope it looks like a development board This is a small minimalistic development board based on the STM8S microcontroller series from ST. I just wanted to have one of these microcontrollers around if I ever decide to work with them. It's just an 8-bit microcontroller but with a bunch of peripherals. The module was extremely cheap at $1.28 shipped. This kind of prices continue to surprise me. It makes you wonder how many are they selling to have a profit margin. You don't get much on the board. A pair of LEDs, a tactile switch and voltage regulator and required decoupling caps. But with the right bootloader loaded on the microcontroller you can just program it over USB. I'm going to stop here with this episode to avoid making it too long and I'm going to continue unboxing more items next week. As always, links for all the products shown in this video are in the description below. Thank you for watching this and if you liked the video please hit the like button below and don't forget to subscribe to get updates on more videos like this. See you next time!